Hello and welcome back to Coin Lady Channel. In case you hadn't heard, Gary Gensler was testifying before Congress and evading the majority of their questions. However, I didn't want to combine several videos into one and treat them as if they were one. Given the chaos that currently exists within the SEC, I thought it would be best to break it down piece by piece. Compared to the average Joe, the Democrats, and a few trader Republicans, that is peanuts. Billions in stolen tax revenue washed through FTX to fund war profiteering. It's not like we can't see the transfers and the blockchains, but senior politicians think they are so cool anyway. And we were aware of the money laundering before to FTX demise. Gary was questioned about his refusal to hand over materials today. Therefore, I will play the video and comment on it briefly. My knowledge and faith in congressional oversight. Okay. Okay, then. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. That's a negative, in my book. Do you approve of the call for climate change information? You're only providing us with links to freely available resources in response to our request. There are now 213 pages of these materials available to the public. And what do you know? You failed to provide any details about the April 12 charges brought against Sam Bankman Freed. After sending you a follow-up letter, Chair McHenry and I were under the impression that the staff recommendation document on the charges against Sam Bankman Freed was created and brought to the Commission for a vote. Is that so? Is there a message from the staff suggesting the charges that Sam Bankman eventually faced and for which he was cleared? The staff provides our Commission with action memoranda, therefore the panel does in fact exist. The work goes on. Therefore, it is real. No, you haven't sent that to us, so that's fine. We know it exists since your staff has told us so, yet you still haven't sent it. We have the responsibility to maintain the confidentiality of any information uncovered during an inquiry. Don't pause for a second longer. Don't try to hide behind the DOJ, if that's the case, it sounds like I should be writing them instead of the SEC about the SEC accusations. Consequently, we will continue this discussion later. I have run out of time. It appears that Gary is following the same strategy he employed in the XRP case. He's deliberately stalling and hiding behind embarrassing paperwork because he knows it will hurt his case. Gary Gensler on his discussion of the crypto crackdown with Sam Bankman Fried. Bankman Fried was in the midst of obtaining a share in the stock exchange IEX when he met with Gensler, and he was accompanied by a group of representatives from FTX and IEX to promote a new SEC certified crypto trading platform. One of them was a prominent attorney who had worked with Gensler and who, allegedly, had boasted about his close relationship with Gary behind his back. Since they had easy access to Gary, they were confident in their ability to influence the situation. Additionally, consider Sam Bankman Fried's political connections, which include Maxine Waters, the Democratic creator of Blue FTX. The Bankman Fried Sam the year before last, we had a kiss. Today, she also attended the hearing. We're covering SEC Chair Gary Gensler's testimony before the Senate and House of Representatives. Three times, Maxine Waters asked Gensler the same easy questions. Do you know why she is so adamant about Gary staying in power? For the simple reason that they have him under their thumb. Again, I think Gary's reluctance to provide Congress with any records is related to corruption. Senator Elizabeth Warren has provided the questions and answers to Gary Gensler, the chair of the SEC, two days before the Senate hearing on cryptocurrency. That they were being dishonest has been exposed. They should both step down at this point. She's currently doing a huge anti-crypto campaign, and in my opinion, she's completely misinformed. However, like Gary Gensler, she favors maintaining a monopoly of power by the largest financial institutions. However, it was so awful that, to put it another way, they had to specifically ask Gary Gensler if he spoke to Elizabeth Warren before showing there today. So, I'll also show that video for a short period of time. Gensler, did you discuss appropriate responses for today's hearing with Senator Elizabeth Warren in advance? I'm only going to represent myself here. Chairman Gensler, before the hearing today. That's terrible when it actually happens. We need to know if SEC Chairman Jay Clayton consulted with Senator Warren before testifying before Congress. Let's take a peek into the future of FTX right now. 
We are aware of FTX intentions to reactivate the exchange. As I've indicated in earlier videos, I don't think they should do that unless they want to completely rebrand. And many others see this as an attempt to restart the money laundering operation. Most people will never have faith in new FTX investors. They took a beating from the media for months about how crypto is dead and FTX is dead. Therefore, they will never employ such dialogue. The crypto community insiders are smart enough not to fall for that trick again. At least $400 million in US aid money was stolen from Ukraine. This is a sad development. A new shocking study claims that the Ukrainian government has stolen at least $400 million in American taxpayer-funded aid intended to bolster the country's war effort in the face of the Russian invasion. According to renowned investigative writer Seymour Hersh, President Vladimir Zelensky of Ukraine, together with other high-ranking government officials and 35 generals, stole money intended to be used to purchase diesel fuel for the Ukrainian army. Hirsch claims that the CIA uncovered the embezzlement plot and determined that the country's officials were using the stolen funds to indulge in a life of excess. Due to the continuous conflict, it has been reported that Ukraine has been having trouble importing diesel, thus the United States has been providing large quantities of money to the country to buy fuel. Ukraine claims it has to import petroleum at significantly higher prices due to these restrictions. According to reports, Zelensky, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and their supporters profited hundreds of millions of dollars off of the American taxpayer by having Ukraine purchase inexpensive fuel from Russia at a greatly inflated price. Still, citizens are flying Ukrainian flags in large numbers. The funds must remain within the country. Right now, people all around the country are struggling. We just finished tax season, so maybe it's time to put American interests first for a change. The vast majority of citizens were required to make tax payments. They care about doing good with the money. People are calling for road repairs. They hope domestic infrastructure will also be upgraded. Meanwhile, they hope that some of the homeless will be removed off the streets. Despite this, we keep hearing that the president intends to fund transfers to the Ukraine. It's a tragedy on an epic scale. For the World Economic Forum's CBDCS implementation, the FTX collapse is a Trojan horse false flag. The connection to the World Economic Forum was also obvious to us. They removed it from their website not long ago, probably shortly after the FTX crash, and I think they were behind the fall of FTX all along to usher in crypto rules and a CBDC. In Ren respect, it seems clear that everyone involved in the FTX debacle contributed more harm than good to the cryptocurrency industry. Future investors were likely scared away as a result. It wounded a lot of people and shook out a lot of weak hands, including some who were undoubtedly crypto believers before seeing their savings wiped away by FTX. Then, discouraged, they give up on crypto altogether. This, of course, will develop further over time. Even now, I can't get the feeling that Gary Gensler will be let go. Several commenters reassured readers that he would be staying put for the foreseeable future. That will be guaranteed by them. We'll just have to watch how things turn out for Gary. Again, I think the SEC needs fresh leadership from inside, someone who will own up to their mistakes rather than trying to sway blame elsewhere. We need honest leaders to take charge. We need leaders who won't stand idly by when giant banks trample on individual investors. I still think cryptocurrency is the only thing that can repair the present financial system, therefore it's important that the correct rules are put in place before they arrive and scare away individual investors. And we recognize its significance to the emerging monetary order. There are some politicians out there who I believe sincerely care about maintaining the status quo of the American banking system. They want to make amends. In my opinion, the goal of the corrupt is to destroy the current system and start again. The Treasury and the Federal Reserve are two prime examples. The White House, as you may know, has similar goals. They want us to wipe the debt slate clean and begin again. They'll just put us back in debt by running the country. But we will monitor FTX developments. Is there going to be any further press about it? Yes, you can count on me to inform you. There's a lot more to this than what was discussed in the SEC hearing today, therefore I'll be making a lot more videos on the subject. That's all I have to say about that, I'm going to end this video now. Please accept my gratitude for tuning in. Thanks to everyone who has seen my videos. 
Please like and subscribe my channel. See you later, bye.